Hi, people. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back, Mr. Milius. We missed you yesterday. Yeah, I missed you guys, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, check-in time, people. Uh, I'm just going to kind of reiterate what the expectations are for the assignment. Uh, I'm pushing the due date to Monday. Uh, here's why. I know I was not here yesterday, so that's one piece of it. Now I want to make sure everybody's on track. And then, two, I really, really wanted you guys to present. And I was going to not have you present because counselors are coming tomorrow and take my whole period. Uh, but we are going to present on Monday. Okay? Uh, the presentations will be really short and sweet. You're going to explain what your topic is. You're going to show the resources that you guys created. Uh, and that'll be it. Next. Uh, but I do want us to have that opportunity. All right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to remind you of some of the products that you have as an option, talk to you about expectations with the rubric, and then I'm just going to come around and check in with each group individually. That's good? Okay, cool. Uh, since you are working with your peers today, uh, I do want everybody's AirPods out and your phones put away so that we can uh, all engage together. Okay, so quick reminder, you guys are coming up with your issue. Right? You've done your research, you should have your plan done, and then the next piece is like actually building your product. The product needs to satisfy two things. Okay? One, you've got to identify the issue and explain how it's impacting groups of people. And two, you've got to propose solutions. Nobody's expecting you to fix the world in a couple of class periods. But what I am expecting you to do is come up with ways that we can improve it. Right? So what can individual citizens do? What could our government do? What could our school do to address whatever the issue is that you have identified? Okay? So that means if you do social media, camera posters, website, whatever, you need at least two things, right? Two posters, two posts on social media, uh, two pages on a website, whatever it is. Uh, one that identifies and educates the issue and how it's impacting people, and then one that identifies ways that we can make improvements. You guys good? All right, beautiful. Your rubric, just so that we're all clear on it, it is my dice rubric. You're going to see this a whole lot. It's going to get graded on a four-point scale. So, did you follow directions, right? The directions are on the other side. Uh, did you complete it? Does it look like you actually finished it? Is the information correct? That means that you're using reliable sources of information, right? Again, we're not looking at Alex's blog spot because, no offense, Alex is a high school student. He's not a expert in inflation or whatever your project is about. Okay. And then finally, effort. Did you show appropriate effort? Did you slap something together and hope for the best? You guys good? <coughs> All right, sweet. I'll be coming around and checking with each group individually. So when I get to you, I'm going to ask you about your topic and for you to show me your progress. So have that up uh, and make sure that everybody in the group can answer those questions. Cool? Yeah. All right, sweet. I'm going to take attendance and then I'll start checking in with folks. <coughs> What's cooking up chicken? Oh, it is actually cooking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if it was. Okay. Yeah, is that with Ms. Fontes? Yeah, Ms. Fontes. Ah, Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. No, I want two. Uh, they'll be connected though, right? So like, I'll put them side by side. Uh, but one should be like, here are the negative impacts of the five day school week. And you can also go back to like where it came from. You guys know that our school system is based on that better model? Okay. So the whole idea of our school system being structured the way it is is so that like when people go to work for my time, I just go to school while their parents are working. <laughs> so it's kind of like child care time to to build robots, to turn you guys into robots to go work in like a little bit of serial society that we don't have anymore. So yeah, uh, that could be something you touch on. And then solutions, like why should we transition, right? How's it going to benefit people? And I know you're going to focus on students, but you can talk about teachers too because you know I'm on board with you. All right, who's that? Brush came late, and she's our guest. She did too. Ask where she at? Huh? Yeah. 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 Do you have a job yet? No, still not sure yet. Still not sure yet. Okay, so do you guys have all the research done? Uh, yeah, we have all the research to build out, but it's just the questions. Okay, so let's finish the plan. Part of that is who's doing what. Make sure everybody's got a job. Uh, homelessness, so, and you're doing social media, so you're going to need images that capture it. And you can think as locally as like Garden Grove or as like Vegas in the United States. Um, and then your captions that go with each of your posts should be like, here's statistics, here's issues, here's causes for one of your posts, and then another post should be like, what can we actually do as citizens and as a government? Cool. Alright, we're done. Alright, what do we make for the flyers? One poster? Two posters. So I'm gonna be real. I think this looks nice, except I think this is a lot of text to have on one poster. Don't change it. So you want a poster, like a paper poster? Let's see what I got.
you switch or you all switch? We all switch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does no one have a job? What is Dylan's no job? Uh, Tom <coughs> does <Tom. coughs> <coughs> So you know the Hollywood phone number, right? Five five five. Five five five. Five 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 five. So all movies before like the year two thousand phone numbers were always that phone number. Never done that before. Ah, thanks for making me feel old. Anyways, so what you should have is this is your issue is a phone number that actually covers people, right? You will pay for your phone here and take a picture. Yeah. Is that your topic? Does your research on the like, graphics work matter? Yeah, I heard that we do it, but we didn't get an extra That's hilarious. Who said that? I don't know. I heard that. Someone left me. Give me a bite. Oh, that's cute. I'm going to come back. I highly encourage you to all get on the same page. Is he really class time? I'm going to have another like 40 minutes to go to this one. And then you have the weekend, but you'll present on Monday, so please make sure you got something. And make sure you research and apply and watch the browsers. Tomorrow, yeah. That's why Monday is going to be like live. Oh, find your place, So they're going to help me. Yeah, so the last time was just setting up your accounts, but this time I actually like filling it. Oh, good. Yeah. Wow, that came out really good. That's a way better printer than I thought. Okay. Um, yeah, you need to add a lot more information about why that's so You know what I mean? Because when I look at that, I'm like, why is it too bad for you? Does that make sense? So, like, um, I know you have much risk cancer on there, but come up with some statistics about, like, the, the rates at which users get cancer, the mortality rate, uh, stuff like that, and then have some, like, links for additional information if you do this QR code if it's going to be like that. Yeah, so you should have two posters, so this is the only one you got so far. Right, so you need one that's, like, here's the problem, here's how it's impacting people, maybe here's why it's happening, and then the other one's, like, what can we do, right? So that's where the health information should go. Cool. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Careful with your words. 
inviting? You don't think you look inviting? No? So the post 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 Remember, we're only on day like nine or ten together. <laughs> what is one the Another job yet? How we doing? What plan? Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, you guys like added another table? Okay, find photos, upload a social media page. Okay, sweet. Do it. So, is somebody actually creating it at what? At Instagram? What social media are we using? Uh, yeah, photos. Okay, so whoever's doing it, start creating yeah. it. Yes. 
being solutions oriented, you guys could do something like that. Obviously, the other half of their project was identifying the issue and how to impact people, but don't overcomplicate the people. <laughs> But in my head, when I see a boot can, I see a recycling can, because I also have to take it to work. Hey, stop smoking. Yeah. 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 Second reason why is moving is here. Yeah, Garden Grove. Garden Grove. So, Matthew, see if you can find specifically images in Garden Grove. Yes. And I know there are some because I had a bunch of students in the last semester that found them. Two different things. Huh? Yes. 
Just tell your mom. Yeah, go to church. Yeah, go to church. Yeah, go to church. Yeah, go yeah, most of them are short anyways. They're like three or four words. Save one. Well, that's the big important message on the bottom. Yeah. She's here. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 People, you got about 19 more minutes of class time for this. It's due on Monday, but you will not have time tomorrow, more than likely. So use your 19 minutes. I'm not hating. Look at this. Look at 
so much. Because I feel like the racist guy on the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Support, support your homies, man.
the same side. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that.
whatever your product is, with the exception of the actual poster that's being made, you need to give me a link that I can see your product on. Okay? If it's an Instagram post, for example, you need screenshots, put it on Google Doc, give me a shared link to that document. If you are doing a slides presentation, give me a shared link to the slides presentation. Right. Dylan, you got that? Yes, thank you. Okay, if you're doing Canva posters, I need links to them, people. I got a way, I have to have a way to access it. I will be presenting on Monday. I intend to grade it on the spot. But just in case you're not here, uh, I want access to your product. And I want everybody else to see the amazing work that y'all are doing. Okay? Good? All right, cool. You guys are out of here in one minute. We got material.
Um, a lot of it was kind of his personality, but a lot of it was laid down when we were really young, uh, developing things like you know, trust and respect and um, say uh, showing affection and emotions and things like that. A lot of that stuff we picked up when we were young children. And those things, you know, you bring into relationships as well, because that's kind of your baggage in your life. Um, besides that, we do have some things in romantic relationships that are similar in friendships. So friendships, you know, you can be somebody you can rely on, you can talk with, you, um, you share emotional things about, but friendships only go that far, whereas in romantic relationships, there's different things that happen in romantic relationships with the friendships. So some people have friendships that develop into romantic relationships, right? So people start off as friends and then they, you know, they develop it later on. So in romantic relationships, there's five things that list here that are kind of exclusive that aren't really present in friendships. So let me go through these for you. Um, one is fascination. Fascination is more like you're, you're thinking about somebody, your feelings for them, you're kind of throwing your mind a lot, right? Um, I wouldn't use the word obsession, but in any relationship, it can kind of be like that, like you're kind of preoccupied with that person. That's fascination. Exclusiveness just means at, at a certain point in relationships, a lot of people decide to be exclusive. Now, there's different types of relationships. Some people don't. They have like an open relationship, but other people say, you know, at a certain point, we're going to date. We're going to be a couple, right? That's exclusiveness. And we're not going to really um, see other people. That's what that means. Um, in relationships, of course, you have physical desire, sexual desire. So there's some form of chemistry where you have a, a sense of attraction to that other person for physical intimacy. Giving the utmost of being an advocate. So giving the utmost just means that you're there to support that person, right? You're there to um, give them um, your support, and then advocating means, right, you're emotionally supporting them, you're kind of um, helping them out, you're uh, trying to make them a better person, and you're, you're working with them together. So part of that is communication, is trust, all those things. So those are things that are present in a romantic relationship that wouldn't necessarily be present in a friendship. So they are different. So distinguishing between the two, one of the things I think your first question asks, you know, what's, what's a romantic relationship? Uh, what have these things that are present that are not really present in friendships? Okay. Now, the next thing is, um, speaking of love and commitment and things like that, this psychologist named Sternberg um, basically had this thing called the triangular theory of love. And he came up with this idea that uh, love is, is committed, is composed of these two things. So I'll go through them, and then combinations, right? So at the top, you have intimacy. Intimacy is where you're, you're into somebody, you like it, right? Um, you have your passion. Passion is infatuation. You might call that chemistry or physical attraction to somebody. Um, maybe a form of sexual nature. Uh, commitment would be empty love, which just means you're there to have a partnership with a person. So you could have that without uh, necessary means, necessary physical. And then combinations of the two, so like liking, and intimacy and passion is romantic love. Um, and this is typically what you'll see early on in relationships. You have a lot of strong feelings and things like that. And a lot of it comes down to brain chemistry. There's things like oxytocin and dopamine that come. When you're bonding with somebody, these chemicals are, are in your brain. Um, and that will be kind of a romantic love. Um, and then there's fatuous love, which is passion plus commitment, which just means um, you might have maybe long-term uh, desire to be with that person, but it's maybe empty, it's not really a fulfilled thing. And then uh, companion love, which is commitment plus intimacy. So the person's committed, they're, they're intimate, meaning they're sharing their emotions, but they're, maybe they're not necessarily physically intimate. Um, and like I said, uh, relationships change throughout time, so you might um, have more or less any of these combinations throughout your relationship. Um, you'll typically see this companion love, maybe when People have been, say, in a relationship all the time. Let's say they've been married for 30, 40 years. Um, maybe the desire and the sexual passion and stuff's kind of waned off a little bit, but now they have more companion about it, which is more just kind of living together. Um, however, uh, each one of those is not a true fulfillment of a good relationship. But what he says is all three of these need to be present to have what he calls constant love. So constant love would be you have both intimacy, passion, and commitment in your relationship. Because uh, some people, like I said, will go through these phases in different parts of the relationship. But unless you have all of them, then you're not really getting the full fulfills that you can from a relationship. So that's the Sternberg's theory. And, you know, uh, it's not a complete theory, but it's just kind of uh, showing what are the different parts that might be occurring in a relationship.
All right, so the first question is, uh, what are some of the common characteristics that you see in the intimate relationship? That was a list of things, so anybody want to throw anything out or I'll just call people over? Anybody want to throw anything out of this all? Want some stuff on this? Okay, what does that mean?
how you were raised, could be your relationship with your parents and your family, um, could be friendships, all those things play into it. Uh, there's some issues, we're gonna get into some of these with the uh, table coming next, but things like jealousy can be uh, a problem. Um, now some people be jealous of relationships, uh, whether or not you, you allow that to control you in a relationship. Once again, some people are jealous, tend to want to control or uh, really want to uh, be totally involved in somebody else's life because they don't necessarily trust that person. So the question is why are you jealous and you're not trusting them? And why is that the case, right? Um, gender roles, power, and other expectations all play into it. But what I wanted to point out is this table and then how that between healthy versus unhealthy relationships. So I'll go through a few of these things. Uh, you both love to take care of yourselves while in a relationship. Once again, you should have your own life outside of a relationship. So you still do the things you like, you still hang out with your friends. Um, once you're in a relationship, you should just, some people will just ignore everybody. They, they spend all the time to that one person. That's not a smart thing to do. Um, you really want to maintain your friendships and other relationships. So hang out with your family, hang out with your friends, and spend time with your partner because if you're just doing everything with them, um, what happens uh, sometimes, there's a lot of times it doesn't work out, right? What happens then? Who's, who's going to be there for you when it falls apart? I hope you saw those friends in um, Once again, you focus on one person and you like yourself. That's not good. Um, you respect their individuality, differences, be yourselves. One person feels pressure to meet the other person's needs. So once again, you should be able to be an individual. You should be able to speak up for yourself, that kind of stuff. Um, once again, I mentioned doing activities with friends and families, independent. Um, one of you has to justify where you go. So that person doesn't want you to hang out with friends, doesn't want you to friends and family, wants to control you, that's not good. One makes all the decision and controls everything, whereas differences between the two of you may be discussing things, compromising, right? So sometimes I get in some relationship, maybe somebody takes the lead, the other person maybe is a follower, but at the same time, if you're discussing important things, you need to talk with communicate about things that you're both into and be able to compromise, right? You express and listen to each other's feelings. Um, one of you feels unheard, is unable to communicate. You respect the need for privacy um, as opposed to sharing everything with everybody. Look, when you're in a relationship, you still are have a right to do things that you don't want to share. You don't have to share a single thing about yourself. It's important that you have a private part of your life. Now, of course, that doesn't involve anything that's, um, you're obviously like, Overtly lying to that person or cheating on them. Those are things that maybe are deal breakers, but once again, if you have things you don't want to share, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, if it involves a relationship, you can probably talk about it. Hiding sexual history or sexual partners versus discussing it. So if you are related to you know, birth control, things like that, if you are deciding to be sexual in a relationship, um, you have to have that discussion ahead of time. Talk about it. I mean, what are you doing? Have any issues? You want to be testing for it? You want to use, you have to talk about birth control. I mean, those things are important to talk about before you get into it in a relationship. Um, and then you feel trapped or sad, you're not able to escape, and already you can both grow together. So, once again, you want it to be a positive thing. And, guys, it's not always positive. Sometimes there's negative, sometimes you have downtime and uptimes. Um, one thing about relationships is uh, if you've experienced that, you will probably over your life have you know, one, if not several, you're going to have a lot of ups and downs. So it was like, well, um, the question is how do you deal with it? So it's something that can be long lasting. Let me go ahead and play this video. It's just a video about a relationship, uh, healthy versus unhealthy. One of those kind of big ones. Okay. Healthy relationships are one of the best things in the world. They lift us up, challenge us, support us, and make us feel like we're super happy. Nothing can get us down when we're in a good relationship especially ones that are just beginning. But if you're in the beginning stages of getting to know someone, how can you tell if it really is healthy? Often we get so wrapped up in ourselves that we don't see when relationships are unhealthy. It might seem like a far away, it'll never happen to us thing, but unhealthy relationships are more common than you would think, and sometimes sneak up on you. If you suspect you might be in an unhealthy relationship, listen on and see if any of these match up to you and your both. One, you fight a lot. No, we don't mean arguing over who has to clean up after you both cook dinner. We're talking about yelling, threatening, and screaming at each other. If you two are getting into screaming matches over every little disagreement, you need to rethink why you two are together in the first place. Two, you hide things. And we don't mean candy or Easter eggs. We mean things like texting other people, 
lying about where you were, or other dishonest actions. If your partner will get mad at you for texting your best friend forever, or going out with friends instead of staying home with them, you might just be in an unhappy relationship. Three, this way or the highway. If your relationship always revolves around how the other person wants to do things, or how you want to do things, you're not in a good relationship. Partnerships involve being partners. This means you need to compromise, listen, and discuss before actions are taken. If it's always one person's way, you two need to sit down and sort it out before resentment and anger starts to breathe. Four, you feel guilty. This one's a little harder to pin down. Your partner might not even be aware that you're feeling this way. Heck, you might not even be aware that you're feeling this way. If you get worried about taking time for yourself, or if you feel that you're not allowed to, address it with your partner. It might be miscommunication, or it might be a clue that your relationship isn't as healthy as you think. Five, it's one-sided. So much of relationship is about sharing your burdens. When you're in a relationship, you get someone to lean on, talk about problems with, and help to deal with your struggles, and vice versa. You need to make sure you're available to be a support system for your partner, letting them lean on you when they need to. The relationship is based on one person or the other. It's not a real relationship. It's just taking advantage of someone. Six, they put you down. We don't mean physically. We mean that they put down their hopes and don't support you in your dreams. You need someone just as brilliant as you are. Someone who will help you achieve your goals, or at least cheer you along the way while you strive for them yourself. Any partner that says your goals are stupid is not a partner you want to have. Get out. Quick. Seven. They refuse to do things that matter to you. If you've said three times you paint when the dishes sit in the sink for days on end and your partner still doesn't change their slovenly ways, you need to get out. They clearly don't respect you as much as you respect them. If they did, they would listen to your concerns and make an effort to do the things that matter most to you. Eight, you're codependent. This one's a little trickier to identify. If you and your partner can't live without talking to each other every minute of every day, you need to reevaluate your priorities. Your relationship should be a happy addition to your life. Nine, they make you feel insecure. Your significant other should make you feel like you're the coolest thing in the world. Why? Because you are. You're an intelligent, hardworking individual who respects yourself. And if your partner is protecting you, you need to leave them. They aren't healthy for you, and you deserve better. If you feel insecure in any way, get yourself out. You're in an unhealthy relationship. You'll be much happier without them. Ten, they're abusive. It seems obvious, but sometimes people in relationships can't see what's actually going on. They justify their partner's actions and take the blame on themselves. Don't. If your partner is verbally, physically, or sexually abusive, you need to get help and get out. If you aren't sure how or if you need help, talk to a counselor or doctor or someone else you trust. They'll be able to get you the resources you need to take care of yourself. 11. You change yourself to be what they want. This is a subtle sign of an unhappy relationship. It should be a big red flag. If your partner says, I like blondes, and you go out and dye hair, it means your partner doesn't actually want to be with you. They want to be with their ideas. Find someone who loves you for you, and then you'll know you're in a healthy relationship. 12. You're unhappy. The biggest sign of being in an unhappy relationship is when you're unhappy. A relationship is meant to be a positive experience. You're supposed to look forward to seeing your partner, not dread or stress about fitting them into your schedule. Let the relationship go, and you'll feel much happier. Trust us, no relationship is better than an unhappy relationship. If you All right, so some of the things were related to what we said here, but you know, just in general, um, sometimes it can be difficult. Uh, some of the things are like automatic deal breakers. Other things are kind of more, you have to work on them in your relationship, but uh, so like, you know, in the video they're like, Oh, if they didn't do the dishes a few times, then break up. Well, you know, those are things that you make a decision on. But obviously, like abusive relationships are bad. Uh, physical abuse, mental abuse, those things are, you know, person is a drug or alcoholic. Uh, uh, but sometimes some of these issues wear on you over time and they, they start to wear on you. And they, they become a problem. Especially if the person is willing to work with you to change those things. So, you know, that's part of it. And, you know, some of you will go through relationships and you'll have to learn, you'll learn a lot from them, right? Uh, what you want, what you don't want, how you're going to experience these things. So what are some of the important things in relationships you think you saw, you heard, you really want to chime in on what's important to you in a relationship? Could be a friendship too, though. So anybody have any ideas about that? Yeah. Uh, communication. Yeah, you know, communicate, talk with each other, right? 
that communication doesn't just mean talking, it's listening, right? And what is the person telling you, and, and how are you going to respond? Are you going to take them seriously? Because you know people complain about things a lot, but does it really do anything to change behavior? Um, and a lot of times it doesn't. I mean, just just complain about things, but it's, if you're complaining, you're not really communicating. You need to tell the person how you know something's affecting you, and you need to change it. What's another one? Anybody else? Communication is good. What else you need in a relationship is support. There are several things. Also, Angeline, what do you think? Respect. Okay. What is respect in a relationship? What do you think? Okay. Okay. So they're they're there to uh, respect you. They're so if you have a dream of you're trying to inspire something and they, they're supporting you, right? They're, um, they're being positive, right? They're not like putting you down and things like that. Huh? What's one more? There's a bunch of things that are on the list. Um, Adrian, what do you think? So you have to be careful what happens 
there are resources out there like uh, um, you know, you know, a court order for somebody to stay away, training order, that kind of stuff. Where sometimes that has to happen. So safety measures from dating online, um, you know, things like uh, don't post any pictures about their things. Don't let people track you unknowingly. Now, you know, you know, you might even be getting tracked and not know it. I mean, they, they have those air tags now where people put them in cars and stuff and they just track you around and where you go. And once again, sometimes they do it because they're suspicious of your activity, but sometimes they do it because they want to control, right? They want to know where you're going all the time. So that's not a healthy relationship. Either way, if they're doing it, they don't trust you. That's not it. If you have to, like, constantly question somebody, it's because you're not trusting them. Why, why don't you have trust in the relationship? That's a problem. Okay? Because they did something in the past, or maybe it's an issue you have. When you were, you know, your trust is broken in the relationship, and you don't trust anybody anymore. So you're going to just constantly annoy them about that. So that's not good. And then uh, responsible social media use, once again, just having that discussion with people, not posting inappropriate things. Um, Online, online dating, uh, they mentioned this at the top. Um, if you're going to be, like, a lot of you don't do this yet, but when you become adults, a lot of people use online dating, like apps, and maybe you contact people through social media and stuff. Especially if it's somebody you don't know or your friends, and make sure you meet up in public, and you meet a few times where there's people around, things like that, because it can be dangerous for just one of the people on the So don't go and hang out with people you don't know. If you do, go somewhere with public, people can see you, let people know where you're going. Because there are safety issues involved. Okay, so sure Alright, so that finishes up that. Just make sure you're doing the questions associated with it. So if you have an assignment today, um, we're going to go ahead and take this love languages quiz. So love languages, let's talk about what the love languages is real quick. I'm going to watch the video. Okay, so experiences love differently, and it's easy to miss the mark when it comes to showing that you care. In his early years as a marriage counselor, Dr. Gary Chapman noticed that over and over, couples voiced similar complaints regarding their marriage. One spouse would say something like, I feel like he doesn't love me. And the other would protest, I don't know what else to do. I'm doing everything I should be doing. Recognizing this pattern and remembering the rocky start in his own marriage, Dr. Chapman poured through years of session notes. He asked himself, when someone said, I feel like my spouse doesn't love me, what did they want? Surprisingly, their answers fell into five different categories, revealing a unique approach for how to effectively love another person. The premise is simple. Different people with different personalities give and receive love in different ways. Dr. Chapman called these ways of expressing and receiving love the five love languages. He even wrote a best-selling book about it. This revolutionary concept has improved millions of relationships across the globe. These love languages don't only apply to couples. The concept holds true for friends, siblings, parents and their children, and relationships of every kind. Each individual has at least one primary love language that they prefer above the others. And that is where it really starts to get interesting. Want to intentionally strengthen and improve your relationships? You can start right now by taking the five love languages quiz to find out how you prefer to give and receive love. <laughs> All right, so, uh, what is this? So you're going to go here and take the quiz. So you're going to go here, go to quiz, start the quiz, right? Once you're done with the quiz, it's going to identify the five languages for you and which ones you have the highest percentage in. So there's five of them. Um, Questions for this. quality time, acts of service, physical touch, words of affirmation, receiving gifts. So with each of these, um, put your percentage, um, give me descriptions and tell me what it is, they'll describe it for you. So I'll, I'll put this one. Quality time is like basically spending time together doing things or just hanging out. So you're together kind of talking or hanging out or you know. Acts of service can be uh, doing things for each other, so it could be like helping with chores, Cleaning up, cooking for somebody, taking care of them in some way, that's active service. Uh, 
physical touch, you know, touching, kissing, hugging, could be any of those things, right? Um, words of affirmation are just like telling somebody your feelings, like I love you, or um, telling them how you feel, or texting them, or writing them a letter, or something like that. Or receiving gifts could just be uh, giving them something, some, some kind of gift of affection. It could be a gift, it could be food, it could just could be something you're giving them to show that they care, right? So for each of these, you're going to, uh, after the test, you're going to put your percentages, you're going to put the description, and then what does it mean to you in the relationship? So, for instance, how would that apply to you? Let's say, you're, now you can even think about these as just a uh, friendship too, or a family relationship. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, right? But, for instance, how would this apply to you? And so what uh, counselors do and stuff like that, they have a couple of take this, and then they see how one person prefers to sh be shown this, and the other person is maybe different. And then these people intentionally do those things for them. And once again, it causes them to feel more, like, oh, you care about me, like, oh, you bought me a gift, or you gave me a hug, or whatever. Like, those are how you show those things, right? So those are the questions. And then at the end, um, you can list which one's the highest for you. Is it accurate? Um, which one's the top one? And then if you think about it, the people in your life, could be family, friends, relationships. Um, you know, is this something that you'd be interested in? What do you think theirs is? Do you know? Um, if not, we can certainly give this quiz to each other. It's a fun thing to talk about in a relationship. Um, you know, it's, it's for you guys. So, something just to do. It's like the personality test we did. It's kind of an introduction to these things. And like I said, some people use this. It's not 100%, but it does give you some insight on, on how people feel. So, uh, finish your questions and then start the love languages, take the quiz, answer the questions. Uh, we'll work on it today and tomorrow. If you're missing any assignments, please get those in. Also, does anybody else have permission slips? Um, some people, you probably the Nardo, Luke, Edwin, Mitch, Aiden. If you haven't heard of any, please let me know. Okay. So, let's keep those done.
Yeah, the descriptions are on the website. If you want to use those, that's fine. Or if you just want to summarize that, up to you.
All right, guys, so I'll put you some up. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, Y'all are going to do it if they put these signs or something. Go ahead and uh, put your comments up. If you have any questions, let's bring them. Please bring them in. Uh, I'm trying to run out of time to get those done. You should have to sign out.
Guys, bumpers, textbooks, we are sharing out our answers from yesterday. So make sure you have numbers three, four, six, and nine answers. We are sharing them out by class dojo. Oh, make sure you have them back. Put your phone away, uh, get your Chromebook and your textbook. Okay. I don't want to see any phones out. Okay, put your phone away. Phone away. going to get started. So I realized in my last group this is going to take a little more time than I thought it was. So we're going to go through these slowly to make sure everybody understands how to make inferences. So please eliminate your distractions and all that. Follow along. As we Dramatic. It's not me that's dramatic. 
So, um, how's everybody doing today? Evelyn? 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 Found a new way to use these buttons. <laughs> Dude, when did Kenny make that?
Question number six on page 249. If you guys, you guys need to flip and show the textbooks, or can you guys all see the mirror? You guys all good? All right, so these are words straight out of the text. Antonio admires the courage of Tugwell pulling the bars five times his welterweight well title. Who can tell me what a Tugwell is? Mark, Martin? That's Mark of the old big book. That smaller book that holds big books, right? What is a welterweight? Anybody? Um, it's a division in boxing. Division in boxing, right? And if my, if I'm a heavyweight, what would a welterweight be? Heavier than 
for me or lighter than me? Lighter. Has anybody ever seen a welterweight boxer? Yes?
All right, so next person, share it now, is their inference. And mm -hmm. I'm here putting these two thoughts together. Can I please hear it from Chris. Chris. And maybe you can start with, if we're not comfortable with you can start with, I can infer that. You can start with words like that just to make it easy. Um. They both relate because they have to like work to not reach that goal. They both have, okay. And then they have to keep training, you know. One is, let's say one is taller than the other. And so what are we saying about it? just these words? So Antonio admires the curve of the tugboat, one more five times its welterweight size. So he's calling the tugboat as working way of way, excelling great, right? So can we say that if you admire the competitor that much, you respect him a lot, so can we infer that Antonio respects Felix? Felix uh, by also training with him? Antonio respects Felix. By training with them?
see this as personality, how do we compare the Antonio personality? No, right? Tomorrow. <laughs> People that call them, people that call themselves the champ. champion of boxing? So like two people are like fighting in camps right now? They are, but what does this tell you about them? So remember the question, what do the details on this page suggest about Felix's personality? I can infer that Felix is cocky. So I like that, so I can infer that Felix is cocky. I should make a lot of CEOs. Unless you back it up, you know. Yeah, and then we can have a different one. Thank you for the participation, man. You guys made it fun. 